I've got to be honest, when I was told I was interviewing the Stephanie McMahon, I was completely overwhelmed with where to even start. I had maybe 5,000 questions minimum, but the first and most simplest stuff is, what's it like to be a total badass? And I mean that in the most complimentary way possible. You know what I totally love about that question is most of the time people ask me, what's it like to be Vince McMahon's daughter? Oh, or, no. What's it, what's it like to be married to Triple H? And, and you're asking what it's like to be a total badass. And I would have to say that uh, it feels great. <laughs> I, I, it must. International Women's Day is right around the corner. And to me, your peak, everything we talk about on that day uh, how women can thrive in so many different avenues and whatever they choose. Where did that internal hustle to succeed start for you? I mean, really, I think I was born with it, um, but certainly by example, my mom was the CEO of WWE. You know, so I always saw women as leaders. I actually just assumed that women would be the CEO, not anything otherwise. It wasn't until I got older that, you know, sort of reality, you know, set in a little bit. But, and of course my dad and just the nature of our business, you know, it's, it's very entrepreneurial. And I use my parents and my family as an example in business and that drive because it is a family business. We've had an opportunity to celebrate achievements of women globally. There's still always a lot of work to do to reach that equality that you speak of. And I know that the WWE has received a lot of criticism for your movement into the Middle East, going to Abu Dhabi or Saudi Arabia. As a woman in your position, how do you see that? It took us six years to have our women be able to perform in Abu Dhabi. Um, six years, and we were criticized. Like, why would you hold shows in a place where you can't have your women showcased? And it took time. And it took time to build the relationship and it took time to build the trust in that market. And then we were able to have our women perform. And there was a chant, both men and women, chanting during the women's match, this is hope. And ultimately what that has led to is not one, but two women's matches in Saudi Arabia where the chant was simply, this is awesome. And those are really powerful, you know, messaging, uh, major moments in your sport. Ties in as well with the racial inequality, the, re the social Absolutely. reckoning that is happening right now. I know you've been extremely vocal in how WWE is going to make those changes. What tangible changes have you started talking about making? Representation is important in on screen as well yeah. as off screen. Right. So I think it does start on screen because you're reaching, you know, such a huge amount of fans and you'll see that representation, you know, throughout our programming. You know, Sasha Banks is the current SmackDown Women's Champion. Bianca Belair just won the Women's Royal Rumble. And we're going to see that match at WrestleMania. That match, I have no doubt, would be epic, you know, and not because they're women of color, because they're incredible women. And I think behind the scenes as well, you know, Big E is actually just launched a, a fundraiser, a Kickstarter campaign for an animated series um, designed to address equality. Montez Ford and Bianca Belair, they do during Black History Month, they've been dressing up cosplay as um, different famous and not so famous Black historical figures. Um, and they wanted to really bring light and educate the audience and, and educate themselves. Right. I, I think that representation is just critical through all forms of media because you really do. You, you have to see it to know it's possible.